Now, when I came out, I told y'all it was just about Biggie, but everybody had to open their mouth with a mother fudding opinion. So this is how we gonna do this. FUD Mob Deep, FUD Biggie, and FUD Bad Boy as a staff record label and as a mother fudding crew. And if you wanna be down with Bad Boy, then FUD you too. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Drip and Farm for Poverty. I'm your host, Drip Coach, dropping knowledge bombs on all Drip ecosystem related projects. And just had to go back to uh, one of the hip hop gurus, Tupac, 1990s. Shouts out to Hit 'em Up Style. Anyway, so in this video, yeah, we're gonna be talking about FUD because I hear this a lot. I've brought this up many, many times, and at least you all that watch my content can be of the small, educated minority. There's gonna be the mass, undereducated majority, but at least you guys will, you know, know the difference and understand. So this acronym actually goes back to like the 1970s with IBM. It's kind of interesting, but let's actually first define what it is and then what it's actually not and how you within the community should respond to this and how me as a content creator should be responding to this. Or I can't say should because you can do it one of two ways. And there's one, in my opinion, that has integrity and will actually lead to massive adoption. And there's one that is disingenuous, lacks integrity and is more of like the snake oil salesman. But to each his own, because not everybody shares the same morals and values. So can't knock them for going that route. So let's first look at what FUD actually is. So simple Google search. What is FUD? And it brings up Ledger, which is great. So we'll just go straight to um, the Ledger definition. And there's some other resources that talk about it as well. They give the history, but this one is the easiest. It's an acronym for fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which refers to the spread of false. That's very important. False or negative information about a cryptocurrency or market to create fear and doubt among investors. Common expression, both traditional and digital asset industry. It happens when people share negative news about a project with the intent to spook investors. That's important there, the intent to spook investors. In crypto, the strategy involves using misinformation, so that's wrong information, fictitious, that would be a lie, or exaggerated, that would be kind of like a little white lie, information to target an asset project or platform. The strategy can also lead to volatility or crash in the price of the asset. So the important thing to look at is that this is all about false or misinformation, exaggerated information, nothing about things that are actually true. Nowhere did you see that, right? Let's go over to Coindesk. Just because it's bad for your coin doesn't mean it's FUD. Not all welcome tidings can be dismissed as attempts to sow fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Not all unwelcome, sorry. And shooting the messenger won't make the message untrue. Facts to Coindesk. And that is something, unfortunately, again, like I said, the mass majority with their single brain cells can't compute this. So this video is not for them. They're gonna just be in the comments and say, you know, things that clearly show that they can't cognitively process things. So you have to just kind of ignore those people. But again, the term FUD, fear and certainty of doubt, refers to the spreading of false or misleading information by foes of a movement organization while the aim of undermining confidence in the project. It's a close cousin to gaslighting and concern trolling. And it's, as the kids say, a thing, right? So this is from Coindesk. We come over here to one by Crypto Adventure and they give some uh, principles, if you will. So first, you must understand that FUD, the term describes hostile statements made by someone to influence people's opinion. It can spread online through social media channels such as Reddit or Twitter. Second, you must recognize why FUD exists in the crypto market. It often originates from people looking to manipulate markets for their financial gain. It may also arise from negative press stories about projects. Third, you should be aware that FUD can be a tactic to spread fear and cause panic selling. So again, this is all about manipulation or misinformation. Fourth, it's important to remember that in some cases, FUD can be good. It allows investors to take a more skeptical approach, which I would call cognitive development and thinking. And finally, FUD can be a direct attempt to manipulate markets. So that's again, misleading and uh, untrue, right? So what we see here is a common narrative about what is FUD and how it's utilized in the markets. And one more most recent example that they cite here is the one about finance, Binance. So literally right now, the SEC was charging, it's still charging, but they tried to uh, get a freeze on Binance's assets and then that got blocked and denied. So they made stuff up, which the judge found out was untrue. So they did not um, issue that temporary freezing or restraint order, TRO, I think it was. Uh, on Binance's funds. And you can see that they have used this against Binance multiple times and nothing has come up with it. So that is literally FUD. 
that is spreading misinformation and lies to try to manipulate, or in this case, I think, try to get Binance kicked out of the US. So that is using it in that uh, in that way or what, what the community or industries would definitely determine as FUD. But if it's literally just fear, uncertainty, and doubt, then to me, there's a proper way to handle that. And what I want to address here is I want to give you a scenario that I have personally had as a personal trainer. So when I came out here and I was doing some training, I had an individual that wanted me to help him improve his vertical. He's a basketball player, tall and kind of linky. So nothing regarding physique or strength training, but when you get certified as a personal trainer, you know a little bit about the body, kinesiology, and um, how to do program loading and deloading and all this other stuff, you can kind of create something that will get somebody much further along if they were to do it on their own. So he wanted to pay me to help him increase his vertical. And I did this for the first 90 days and he made improvements. But after that, I went to him and said, look, man, this is not my area of expertise. I'm going to give you the information that I have, but I can no longer charge you for this because I feel this is disingenuous as me as a trainer to charge you for um, this program because this is not my wheelhouse. You may get there with this information and you may not, but I can at least get you pointed in the right direction and point you towards somebody else who's more skilled at that. So this is where I say you can be a snake oil salesman and you can just take people's money and say, yeah, I'm going to sell you something, even though you know that you are not the right person for the job, or you can be honest. Now, also now selling um, online training and doing uh, in-person training in my area of expertise, you'll have people literally, right? So I'm trying to tell them, hey, here's your, your goal is to slim up and uh, improve some curves, lose some body fat, all this stuff, right? The, the basic stuff that a personal trainer definitely has the skills and resources to do. Now, the person that is buying from me is going to typically do one or multiple um, of these things. They're gonna say, that sounds great, but I'm a little uncertain that I'll be able to stick to an online training program. Uncertain, that's part of FUD. you would be like, okay, I'm ready to sign up, but that doesn't exactly fit my budget. Do you have something else more in line? I, I'm not quite sure if that's something I could pay for or that I get the value out of that. If I pay that amount, it sounds kind of high. Do you have a discount? This is fear, right? And they'll also say that I, I doubt that I could stick with this program for 90 days, or I doubt that this will work for me. I've tried other things. What makes yours different? How can you guarantee I'm going to get through this? Blah, 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 blah. So any person that knows just like an, a little bit about sales and marketing understands that every single client coming through their door is going to have some level of fear, uncertainty, and doubt about their product. That's called healthy skepticism. And it's called just shopping around for the best deals to make sure you're buying the thing that actually works for you. So every single client should come through with one or two or multiples of these. And as a, a salesperson that is worth their salt and that is actually has integrity, they're going to address those fears and those uncertainties and those doubts to that client. When they say, I doubt that this will work for me. I've done multiple things. I, I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried all these other programs. What makes you so sure yours is going to work? It's like, okay, well, I hear you. How about instead we give you a uh, full money back guarantee? So if you do this for 90 days, you don't get the results you want. At the end of the program, you fill out a form, do an exit interview. We'll give you a full refund. How does that sound? You just remove that doubt, right? Again, that's someone who has integrity. That's, that's That stands behind what they're selling. Now, unfortunately in the echo sphere that we have right now and i heard one of the content creators use this analogy that say you were selling a house and you were telling the client that was looking at your house it's like well there's uh, the plumbing leaks or there's a problem with the plumbing there's uh, some electrical issues the uh, the roof has some problems there's raccoons that shit in the yard um th this individual said that's foot no that's called being an honest salesman and that's also why if you don't have honest salesman, you get a third party independent um, inspection on your house. When you go buy a used car, you get that inspection done because you know that not all salesmen are going to be honest. They're going to lie to you. They're going to hide the truths of the asset they're trying to shove down your throat. They just want your money. So like I said, that's that's neither here nor there because some people operate underneath that disingenuous uh, mask of integrity or lack thereof, I should say.
So I, as I told you with my example, with the person that wanted me to help him dunk, told him straight up after 90 days, like, yo, bro, this is not my wheelhouse. I want to give you a refund. Um, we're not, I can't go forward with this. He didn't want the refund. He gave me the money for it and he continued training. And then three, I think about four months later, he actually uh, got the dunk on his own and came back and thanked me for it and actually referred a couple clients to me. Uh, not for not for dunking, but for uh, other fitness training because I was honest and straight up with him. And I've done that multiple times in my personal training business. I've given people refunds. Um, I've turned away clients when I have my physical training business. They're like, hey, I just want to come train at your facility. I don't want to do the program you have. I just want to use your equipment. I was like, well, I'm not that kind of gym. It's like, well, how much can I pay you for you to be that kind of gym? And I was like, that's not me. I can't do that. Same reason I haven't shilled any other projects on my channel that would get you guys wrecked because I'm not that kind of person. But again, not to discredit anybody that is because that's their own uh, their own morals and values. They're allowed to do that. That's up to them. But the point I want to get you guys to see is first and foremost that FUD is about people that are misrepresenting or spreading misinformation or fictitious to try to tank the price of a project. And what we need in DeFi, not we, I can't say that, the people that are educated and have cognitive development, what you all need to do is entertain these questions. Because when someone comes into at least my telegram and they ask, why is the drip price going down? I don't just kick them out. I tell them what's well, going down because we peaked at the top of the bull market. We've had no development for 18 months. We've had a bunch of delays in other uh, areas of the ecosystem. Uh, we've had the entire bull market come to a crash. All these other things. They need to know about that. They need to tell them about the future things that the community is developing and what's coming off for the roadmap. But you have to address it. You can't just kick them out, right? When they say, well, when will Triple D launch? You can't kick them out and say that's but. That's literally somebody asking because they don't know. And they could be a potential investor. But unfortunately, there are um, telegrams that do not entertain any sort of questions about things that are, how'd this one say? Um, true, but you may not like it. I think it was up here somewhere. Um, yeah, not all unwelcome tidings can be dismissed as attempts to sow fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And shooting the messenger won't make the message untrue. So someone's asking, why is your price down? When will Triple D launch? Why did Forex say things were 100% done if they weren't done? How will Drip be affected with the new circulating supply that's 20 times what it was before? These are not FUD. These are simple questions that people have that they need addressed if they're going to invest in something. Same way, like I said, with a fitness program or anything out there. When you go buy a car, a TV, whatever it is, you do your own research. You check the, um, the uh, not referrals, the feedback on the website, all this stuff. You ask your friends, you get stuff from uh, some information from other people, other sources. And if you're smart, you actually seek out the negative information. So whenever I'm looking at buying something, I read the one star reviews. I want to know what people said about it. And if I'm the one selling it again, my personal moral compass says that I'm going to tell you what the issues are and tell you how I'm trying to address them, how I'm trying to fix them. I've mentioned multiple times on my channel about my own projects where my uh, strengths are, where my weaknesses are, and how I'm trying to address those things. So to me, that is the marks of a good salesperson, a good person that you want to uh, follow behind that has morals, values, and integrity, but not everybody marches to the beat of that drum. And in crypto, for sure, and DeFi, it's all about just uh, telling people the, um, the, the price is going to the moon and that everything is fine. It's like singing the Lego song. Everything is awesome when it's not. It's like that meme with the cat sitting in the, the roof is on fire. The whole house is burning down and it says everything is fine. It's like, yeah, you can tell people that. And that may help some people stay in and all that. But you're, in my opinion, of course, my opinion, my channel, you're being disingenuous. You're a liar. And you are actually just helping people become exit liquidity because if they're not educated then they're going to make the wrong moves later on. And all you did was get them wrecked. And again, my purpose for the channel is to empower the impoverished. This is people that don't have the ability to just throw money down the drain or blindly follow people with that say something's going to happen and it never does. So my, I guess, call to arms or for this or whatever I'm getting at in this video is that if you guys have questions that you have been kicked out of other chats because they're labeled as FUD, if they are legitimate questions of uncertainty, of doubt and fear regarding your investment and what the future might be, you can come to my channel and ask, you know, ask me in the comments down here or come into the telegram and ask. I will gladly help you navigate these DeFi waters and educate you along the way so that you can make an informed decision. 
I'm not going to kick you out, not going to call you names and say you're stupid or whatever the case may be, because I realize not everybody's at the same part in their journey and has the same information and not everybody watches every single video. So if you're looking for a place to ask questions, by all means, head to my telegram, drop me a comment down below. And if you want to find an echo chamber, those are out there as well. Um, there's plenty of cheerleaders that will just tell you one thing, even if it's not true, but um, it just depends on what type of person you want to be and what you want to hear and how you make your decisions. So it's all up to you. So that's all I got. Hope that provides some value. Hope that provided uh, some insight towards FUD you <laughs> and how to navigate these DeFi waters and how FUD is utilized in the actual traditional retail space as something that is not considered negative as long as it's actual, genuine questioning regarding uh, a market or a uh, product or service, something like that, and how you can use that to your advantage, especially if you are a content creator or you're trying to provide someone with some insight on getting into a particular crypto asset. So I'm encouraging people to help others along the FUD waters and if you need help with that, yeah, jump on my telegram. So that's all I got. Hope that provides value. If you did smash that HBO special, help brother out, like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, lift daily and achieve your impossible. See ya. Want to pay your in real life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.